Hey everybody, welcome to our barn building video series. In this video series, we're gonna take you step-by-step -step through the entire construction process, offering detailed insights and tips along the way. So whether you're considering a barn kit for yourself or just curious about the process, this series will give you everything you need to know. So we are pretty much roofed in. I'm not going to call it watertight but because we don't have walls, but we've got a roof on. And one thing you'll notice is on this country carpenter barn, we use conventional lumber. And the reason why we do that is uh, for the rafters and the collatizers, a lot of this stuff gets hidden. We're going to do uh, you know, uh, tongue and groove or shiplap b-board all the way up. So a lot of the stuff will get insulated and hidden. The other thing you'll notice is that we used um, the uh, Huber um, uh, sheathing instead of the one by eight boards, which is what a lot of the barns would have because they wouldn't be insulated. You would see the boards on, all the way up. Because we're insulating this building, we chose to use plywood because one, it was way stronger than boards and you know really ties the building in, you know, gives it rigidity. So we went with plywood, we're gonna spray foam it, and then we're gonna do you know, horizontal boards this way. It's gonna look fantastic. The other thing that we did is, you know, bringing old to new, right? So timber frame barn, old construction, but uh, everything is done and brought to code. So we use lots of metal fasteners and uh, rafter ties, hurricane clips, uh, tie downs, straps on the ceiling, on the uh, rafters to tie the, um, the rafters in on the outside of the plywood. Um, sorry, yeah, before the plywood was put on. So those, those things and the big black brackets that we've used in, in the, uh, to tie in the walls, all of those brackets and metal fasteners help bring this up to modern codes and give us a little bit of uh, uplift and hurricane protection and stuff like that tie in. So that's where we're at. The next step for us will be, we'll start to sheathe the building. So there are two layers of sheathing. It's a little complicated. If it was just a barn, we would do one layer, right? But because we want the barn look on the inside, but we want to insulate, we need to put 1x8, 1x10 shiplap boards all the way around. Then we'll apply a 3-inch rigid uh, poly insulation. And on top of that, we'll strap that, and then we'll put our final siding on. So stay tuned for, for that. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about how we'll build out kind of our window box and our doors and we'll pad the doors windows out. We'll talk about waterproofing, uh, might get into a little bit of rain screening and stuff like that. If, um, if we have some time, we'll detail that out. So stay tuned and we'll, uh, we'll see what's next. Hey everybody, back in the shop with Jeff, and we're gonna talk a little bit about the uh, below slab insulation on our timber frame. We used Sika's R-Max below grade insulation, and we use it on our timber frame barn and the little knee walls that go around the frame, the foundation. Uh, basically, we did it to enhance energy efficiency and protect the slab. Uh, the R-Max below grade insulation offers higher R values when you compare it to the typical XPS or EPS insulation boards. Uh, it's key to protecting your structure from water damage, especially below grade applications where maybe uh, you know slabs have are exposed to moisture and stuff like that. Jeff, why why did you want to insulate the slab? Were there some reasons? What were you thinking about when you um, were putting together this package and we were discussing it? Yeah, well, even though we're not doing a radiant floor heat, which I think is very common when people associate insulated slabs right. with, we're, we're not doing that, but we still considered it worth insulating the slab, it, it's going to provide uh, so year-round comfort. It's going to sort of stabilize the, the temperature of the floor. It keeps the floors warmer in, in the winter, cooler in the summer, uh, really helps maintain kind of an even thing. And if we do condition the space, it's going to, it's going to insulate. It's right, going to right. help everything. 
It provides a vapor barrier protection. Yeah, um, it prevents that moisture wicking up through the soil up into Rusting the space. Rusting your table saw. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's going to help against yeah mold, wood rot, uh, any type of flooring damage too. You, know, you can get a lot of uh, uh, marking stuff. Yeah, and, and then there's, well, then there's condensation just That's from awesome. having a, 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 a rapid temperature differential on the floor if you are conditioning and again condensation is going to be right, actual right. moisture that's going to damage everything and then actually help dam uh protect the concrete itself it provides an additional layer uh, for it to sit on um it helps prevent you know any type of erosion cracking and so forth and it prevents that kind of high fluctuation of temperature changes too right. so um well why did we go with with Seeker? was was uh, our max below gray it's actually a newer version for them right an updated product yeah well these uh, the poly iso so it's a little it's a different type of uh, actual foam compared yeah. to XPS and EPS, like you mentioned before. Um, but it's it's got um, it's got great thermal uh, resistance. It's got a higher R value. I think it's like one, you know, they can get like a R10 out of inch and a half. Right, um, right. They're totally an industry leader too, as, <clears throat> as far as you know. I see them everywhere on job sites. Uh, some of the benefits I know of using it, like you mentioned, was the thermal resistance. And if you think about, you know. You're trying to help regulate the barn temperature, right, year round. So maybe we've got mini split in there, and we're trying to keep the temperature consistent. It's going to enhance that, um, and just offer a higher R value than than the other stuff that we were using. So um, I think um, we, we pretty much covered all the benefits. You know, when you were, when you explained why you chose it, I think it's just uh, cheap insurance in the long run to do something like this. It just gives you that little bit extra. I wish I'd done it here in my shop and on a few other projects I've done. Uh, it's really durable. When we were installing it, um, it was dense and, and you know it doesn't dent easy. It's got a compression compressive strength of uh, what is it? I mean, it's a minimum of twenty five. It's like twenty five oh. up to sixty, which you need to have yep. for below grade applications for pouring and backfilling yeah, and all that yeah. stuff. Uh, and, and look, it was super easy to work with. Uh, it was just slice with a knife and snap. Uh, we were using four by eight sheets and just fitting in where we needed to on on the perimeter. Uh, as far as the insulation steps, um, you, you know, you mentioned that the poly iso stuff can be a vapor barrier, but we also did a plastic right. six mil vapor barrier. That was a, it was like a double we duty. It, just, it yeah. was just it's a minimal effort thing to just lay down some six cheap, mil um, cheap, cheap. plastic down. It, it that way, if we miss the seam, we miss because you you do want to tape all your seams, right. and that's going to help right. you you know get that solid vapor barrier. We also went with two layers. You could do one. We went with two, so we were using inch and a half inch Seeker uh, R Max boards. Our 10 per layer, so we got our 20 total, right? right? It's pretty good for a slab. Um, and then the method we put it in, right? So we decided to, um, what would you call it? Uh, perpendicular? Yeah, criss basically crisscross, you know, yeah. that because we did two layers, we wanted to, we didn't want to overlap our seams perfectly. We wanted yeah. to. We wanted to overlap yeah. them, like, yeah. yeah. Um, and then we poured a slab over it. What was the slab PSI? Uh, 4,000, yeah, it was a 4,000 PSI pour. Uh, it ended up being about four inches four five, thick yeah. Uh, yeah. Nominal across, the, across the floor. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, I, I think it was a smart decision in the end. We, we debated whether to do it. Um, the bottom line is you're protecting your project, right? Your investment against moisture and energy loss. It's uh, more energy efficient. It's going to be reliable, superior thermal insulation, moisture control. So I think it was the right decision for us to do it. Um, in hindsight, maybe we should have gone all the way down the footings, right. but, you know, that's why we call it hindsight. And we'll show you some of the other things in the barn as well.